Hello everyone and welcome to the quarterly update. FEI is dedicated to your professional development and we have a variety of programs and opportunities to get together with your peers along those lines. Coming up in May, we have on the 7th and 8th in Boston, Technology for Finance Leaders. The Financial Leadership Summit in Houston, May 20th to the 22nd is also available. And Accounting Change for Financial Leaders, June 18th and 19th in Chicago. I want to thank our chapters for our partnership in these events. A lot of great opportunities to network and learn from your peers. One additional event that's coming back due to popular demand as it was just recently sold out is New Elise Accounting Standards Implementation Challenges and Best Practices. We'll be hosting it in New York City on July 11th. Um, look at the link for more information. If you can't make events in person, there's a lot of virtual opportunities as well. We'll be launching the Enterprise Risk Management course in May, and we have a virtual technical training series coming up in June, which will be covering cybersecurity, a FASB update, accounting for income tax, uh, and the dangers of improper revenue recognition. So look forward to all those events for you in the coming months. And now I'd like to hand it off to my colleagues that will give you an update on FEI's technical committees. FEI's technical committees were actively engaged in the tax reform debate last year. Our committees on taxation and private company policy were particularly active in providing policy recommendations and practical advice to lawmakers on Capitol Hill as various legislative proposals made their way through the House and Senate. While the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act was passed in late December and incorporates a number of business tax provisions recommended by FEI's technical committees. Enactment of the law didn't bring an end to our technical committee's engagement. The new law brings some fundamental changes to business taxation and FEI members are looking for guidance and clarification from the Treasury Department and IRS as they implement their organization's compliance. As part of our efforts to help FEI members understand how to comply with the new law, the Committee on Private Company Policy held its annual Washington fly-in recently. Twelve FEI members traveled to Washington, D.C. for a day-long series of meetings with key members and staff of the House Ways and Means and Senate Finance Committees to discuss the impact of the new law on private companies and to emphasize the need for clarification and guidance on the law's new deduction for pass-through income. Fly-in attendees also met with senior Treasury Department officials to discuss the need for guidance and to offer recommendations to make that guidance and subsequent regulations most helpful to private companies and other taxpayers. In the coming weeks, CPCP members will once again travel to Washington to meet with staff of, the, of Congress's Joint Committee on Taxation to provide feedback on the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act as the JCT drafts its Blue Book, a guide to the new tax law to be published by the end of the year. FEI's Committee on Taxation has also continued to be active on the new tax law, meeting with key players in the tax reform process from Congress and the executive branch during their most recent meeting in March. COT met with the Chief Tax Counsel of the House Ways and Means Committee and the Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Treasury for International Tax Affairs to discuss concerns about some of the international tax provisions of the new law. COT will continue to provide feedback on the new law to the Joint Committee on Taxation, the Treasury Department, the Financial Accounting Standards Board, and the White House's Office of Management and Budget at its next meeting in Washington, D.C. on May 11th. All of FEI's technical committees will continue to play an active role in representing our members' interests as implementation of the tax law continues in the coming months. Hi, everyone. Here to just share a couple highlights for you that's, that have happened over the last quarter. Since the last update, the FASB issued an exposure draft related to how customers should account for implementation costs related to a cloud computing arrangement when that cloud computing arrangement is considered a service contract. Now the ED proposes that customers should be accounting for these implementation costs consistent with guidance that exists already for cloud computing arrangements when those arrangements include an internal or a license for internal use software. So essentially this will be aligning the treatment under both types of cloud computing arrangements. CCR had issued previously a comment letter on this topic after it was discussed by the Emerging Issues Task Force back in the fall. And by the time you see this, CCR will have issued a second letter directly in response to the exposure draft that was issued. CCR is largely in support of, of the proposed um, guidance. 
However, there are some recommendations that are included in the letter just to be aware of. On another front, some of the things that we're working on with CCR, specifically specific members who form a, a subcommittee, um, is to helping to develop the content for this year's CFRI conference. As many of you are well aware and have attended in the past, FEI's CFRI conference is a, is a huge event, it's one that we're really excited about. And as I mentioned, a couple of our um, CCR members are, are critically involved in helping develop the content for that, so we're looking forward to that. Another thing that um, we're sort of in the, in the midst of or really looking ahead towards in June, a couple exciting things there. First off, um, in June we'll be having our quarterly meeting of CCR once again in about mid-June. And in connection with that, we have our SEC subcommittee of CCR and our PCOB subcommittee of CCR will both be meeting with the respective regulators um, around the same time as the June CCR meeting. And the purpose of those meetings is to continue to foster the dialogue between preparers and regulators. Those meetings will take place respectively at the SEC and at the PCOB. And again, just another chance to kind of facilitate that dialogue and really get the preparer perspective out there. So just a couple things that are going on and, and what we're looking ahead to. Um, and until next time, take care. A running theme over the past several CFIT meetings has been the evolution of the modern financial skill set and building the finance workforce of the future. At the recent meeting, the committee heard a presentation related to this topic by PwC Partner and International Accounting Education Standards Board Information and Communication Technology Chair Anne-Marie Vitale. That presentation was followed by a roundtable discussion that focused on timeless accounting and finance skills that are not specifically tied to any one technology. We are continuing our dialogue with Anne-Marie and the IAESB ICT Task Force to determine appropriate next steps for CFIT and potentially the broader FEI membership. To continue our engagement with the task force on this important project that could have far-reaching implications for the future of accounting and finance education standards worldwide. In the coming months, CFIT will continue their evaluation of blockchain and robotic process automation, or RPA. As these technologies advance, their use by finance functions, both large and small, will become more prevalent. Mm -hmm.